Hey guys, I know it's been a while since my last update to the channel and I wanted to apologize for that. It's been a rather hectic year for me with a new job, a wedding, and all that. But uh, we're banging on all cylinders now after the New Year's. I hope you guys have had a great year. I know I have, but I'm looking to get some more content out to you this year. Really start getting things going. As such, it has been abundantly clear that I've needed to update, basically start building my electrical bench top setup. We've bought our first bench top power supply. As I said, it's abundantly clear over the last project that finally I had to pull the trigger on buying one of these. They're not the cheapest things around. They're also not too expensive. You go with a single output one, it's not that bad. What we have here is the Tech Power TP 3005D-3. It's a triple output supply that I bought used on Amazon. Normally this goes for about $200 I got it for 150. Comes with cord, and I thought it was supposed to come with a few banana clips. I'll look through the box in a second to see if that's in there. Anyways, the, the reason why we had to buy this now is because I just found I was getting held up too much in the development process where I would need some, I would want to test out some small circuit, some piece of a circuit where, oh, even though I have 12 volt, which I had a 12 volt unmodulated supply, I would need like 10 volts or something like that. And that means I'd have to develop a circuit just to give me that 10 volts. And yeah, you can do a pretty quick one with a potentiometer and have the center wiper arm be a voltage divider. But the potentiometers I have aren't super high quality right now. So I'd have to spend a long time just getting it all dialed in. When with this, I can dial it in real quick takes me three seconds. Don't have to worry about breadboarding something else up. Just to check something that's already on the breadboard. You can actually get, if you're looking to start building your bench setup, you can also go with a single output supply for about $50. And that was one of the things I was looking at. The reason why I went with this is because this has circuitry in it that allows us to do parallel and series operation. The reason why this is called a triple output, as you can see down here on the front, we have a bunch of banana slash screw terminals. They're in sets of three, except for this last one, which is two. This would be channel one, this is channel two, this is channel three. The first two are variable. The third one is stuck at five volt, two amp output. The whole system here can do zero to 30 volts and zero to five amps. One of the things I noticed since I did go a little bit cheaper uh, with the power supply was that the documentation wasn't as great. So one of the things I'm gonna take you guys through today is testing the power supply, make sure that there aren't any weird ripple voltages. And for those of you that don't know what that is, basically the alternating current in the wall, a sine wave. And DC, it's just a constant, what we call direct current. AC is alternating current, meaning that it kind of fluctuates back and forth. To make it DC from AC, you do have a rectifier circuit. I'll be doing a video down the line where we actually explore this a little bit more, but it basically flips uh, that reverse current up. How that circuit is constructed, uh, you can get what's called a ripple. And it means that basically instead of having a nice flat straight line, you kind of get like this stuttering. Some circuits don't care about it. Some high-end circuits though, they can get really messed up by that little fluctuation because they're so sensitive to the voltage that they need taken right out. Usually when you go with your cheaper power supplies, you might see some problems with your ripple voltage. All right, so we got this plugged in. Moment of truth. Oh. Okay, right now it is in parallel. If I put this one in and this one, this switch out, that'll be in series. If I put both out, they're in independent mode. As you can see here, we're at constant current. It means I don't have enough current supplied to be able to get up to the voltage I need. Okay, all right.
right, so that says it can go to 32 volts. This says it can go to 32.2 volts. Um, I'm going to start at something a little bit lower. Don't want to go nuts. Put this over to 200 volts. You might be asking, if, why 200? Well, this is ranged in a couple different ways. One of them is voltage, and there's different steps. And it basically is, long story short, it's moving your decimal point on your digital multimeter. And so you want to set it larger mm -hmm. than whatever you've got. Mm -hmm. The step below that is 20. The step above that is 600. So 200 is nice in between value. So let's set that up there. All right, so my minimum readable voltage on here is 10 milliamp or 0.1 amps. So we're gonna go like this and it says zero, zero. That's good. All right, that says 4.2, this says four. Let's snap this down for accuracy. We're gonna go down. I set it down to 20 because I'm not near the 20 yet. We're at 4.15. So not exactly on target, considering it only goes to 0.3 and this says 0.32, not bad. 7.2, 7.24. So basically what I'm just gonna have to do anytime I need something like super precise, which won't be often. And that's part of the reason why I went with the bargain over something that's $400. I don't have applications that really need this super concise voltage control. If you do find you have a power supply that is not super accurate up here, all you gotta do is throw your DMM on it and verify, hey, what am I actually seeing at my terminals? And that's kind of a good practice to get into anyways with any equipment you've never used before. Always double check it because you don't know if it's been calibrated. That's one of the things that we're always doing at the company that I work for. We make sure everything is calibrated. And that means somebody went with a DMM and made sure it's super accurate. Like, so what this says here is what, it's, what I'm gonna read on the DMM. So let's keep going. And you heard that little click that was when we went over 15 volts. All right, we are above that limit. Let's go to 20, 20.5, 20.6. So I think what we're seeing here right now is this says 20.8, this says 20.7. This is a difference in how the circuits run. This one I believe rounds down and this one rounds up. Depending on how you set up your voltage reading circuit, you're gonna have to make that decision. Do I want it to round up or round down? I always kind of choose to round up because most of the time that I've run into, voltage that is too high is usually more de detrimental. Some of the computer guys are gonna tell me, whoa, 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 Cam, back your horses up there because in their line of work, it's very detrimental to have low voltage. Um, I've never broken a circuit that way, but you can get some weird, funky stuff going on where your logic's all screwed up. Let's just go all the way up. All right, so this says 32.2. This one says 32.1, fluctuating on zero. Turn that back down. That's right on the edge of what is considered high voltage, 40 volts being the threshold for high voltage. So this is 7.2. Seven point. All right, so the second one's a little bit farther off. But again, not gonna be a huge issue. I can just throw the DMM on it, hone it right in on this to know, okay, I'm, I'm where I need to be. And one of the things I wanted to point out to you guys is the CC, you'll see CV and CC. And they'll light up accordingly. CC stands for constant current and CV stands for constant voltage. People are most familiar with constant voltage. I set it to a voltage, that voltage is gonna be where it needs to be, no matter what the current is. And that's called regulated voltage. But they're also constant current mode. As you can see, there are some knobs here for regulating current. This is good for development of circuits, which is what we're doing on this channel. It protects your circuit from we as the engineer doing something stupid, either a short circuit or maybe I forgot to put a resistor on a certain part of the circuit. Didn't have my coffee that day. I designed a circuit with not enough resistance so I would blow the chip. Well, I usually look at the chip specs on the data sheet and they tell me if this chip can handle a maximum of 0.7 amps. I'll go over here 
put a short across it, tell it, hey, I want you to only provide this much current, and then it'll cut out. It won't allow anything above that to come through, which is great. It saves my chips. So that brings us to constant current. You hit that current protection limit. As you can see here, that light come on saying, hey, I'm in constant current mode. Usually that's an indicator I've screwed up somewhere and my voltage that I'm trying to get through can't be achieved based on the settings I've put. So if you're messing around with a circuit and you know that you're not above your current limit with, with, with your setting and you're getting constant current and your voltage isn't where it should be, check out your current limit. Probably means that you've set that either too low or also very much double check your circuit for any short or any missing parts and then go from there. But always make sure that you're not exceeding your current limit. So this should be outputting five volts, three amps, nonstop, all day, every day. We're at 4.9 volts, which is acceptable. That That's within a 20% tolerance, which a lot of manufacturers are doing these days, of voltage. That's nice for your kind of USB phone applications. So that's nice to have. All right, so, so let's check that amperage. I turned this all the way up. I should be able to see right here, five amps come up, 5.25. That's not too bad. I've actually got a higher current limit. That being said, it does say 5.52, and it says 5.52 here. All right, let's go to the next one, 5.48, 5.48. You notice there's a difference between these two. That's fine, because this thing is only rated for up to five amps. So we've actually exceeded our tolerances, which is great. I'm super stoked. All right, so let's move on to the next part, which is check out our ripple voltage. Now I've got the power supply connected up to the oscilloscope on my computer provided by the Analog Discovery Kit 2. Awesome little piece of tech that allows this by Digilent. I've taken the time to actually hone it in and give us a better picture of what's going on so actually you guys can see it. I'm also going to throw up a still store of this so I can see that each increment here is 20 millivolts and so it's plus or minus 10 to 15 millivolts and that's not the best but it's more than enough for what I need to do in most of these projects I'm not going to notice any of this some people were complaining about this supply having a 60 hertz ripple on the outputs. I'm very grateful that I'm not seeing this. That would be basically bad power conversion from the wall. But anyways, I'm super stoked. I'm totally ready for this to be on my bench, get to show you guys what I'm doing. All right guys, so that finishes up the unboxing and diagnostic of the power supply. Uh, it's everything I could hope for. It's got a nice carry handle and everything. Only some minor scratches. It actually, for how much I saved, I'll take the scratches. It's better condition than some of the new gear that I get in the mail. Looking forward to putting out a lot of new content for you guys in the coming year. This will help out greatly. If you're interested in where I got it, I'll be leaving a link in the description below. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe. If you didn't or have some constructive feedback, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. I'm always looking for new ideas on stuff I can mod and how we can improve this channel. Anyways, thanks for joining us. This is Reengineered Tech.